Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report for January 2018, the 16th Regiment of Engineers Railway. The 16th Regiment of Engineers Railway was Michigan's only all-volunteer regiment. They were organized, mobilized, and trained in the city limits of Detroit. The State Report. On the evening of Friday, January 12th, at Michigan's Military Heritage Museum in Grass Lake, Michigan, there was a World War I Centennial event honoring the ambulance drivers from Michigan. The Ambulance Corps was developed before the United States entered the war, and a number of Michiganders volunteered to drive for the American Field Service or the American Red Cross. Once the United States entered the war, most of these drivers were assimilated into the U.S. Army part of the Medical Corps. This event was sponsored by Jackson Community Ambulance Service. On January 17th, at the Society of Automotive Engineers International Headquarters in Troy, Michigan, Chairman of Michigan's World War I Centennial Commission, Dennis Skupinski, met with members of the Mobility History Committee of the SAE to talk about the World War I Liberty Truck, which was a joint venture between the U.S. Army Quartermaster Corps, and the Society of Automotive Engineers. During this meeting, it was decided that a paper would be presented to the SAE World Congress in mid-April at Cobo Hall on the World War I Liberty Truck and the SAE's involvement. Just a reminder to check the latest events for Michigan's World War I Centennial. Please go to www.cc.org slash Michigan. One century ago, January 1918, on January 4, 1918, the Finnish Declaration of Independence is recognized by Russia, Sweden, Germany, and France. On January 4, 1918, HMHS Rewell was sunk by a German submarine. The Rewell was returning to Britain from Malta with 279 wounded officers on board. Neutral inspectors from Spain boarded the ship in Gibraltar to confirm she had no military function. At 11.15 a.m., she was hit by a torpedo 19 miles off Heartland Point. The ship took around two hours to sink, allowing all the wounded and ship's crew to board lifeboats except for four engine men who died during the initial explosion. On January 8, 1918, President Wilson gave a speech to Congress on his 14 points. The 14 points were the statement of principles for peace that were going to be used for peace negotiations in order to end the First World War. On January 10, 1918, the British government assures the Russian Bolshevik government of their support for the creation of an independent Poland. On January 15, 1918, the keel of the HMS Hermes is laid in Great Britain, the first purpose-designed aircraft carrier to be laid down. She would finally be commissioned in 1924. On January 20th, 1918, there is naval action outside the Dardanelles. The German cruiser Breslau and a British monitor Raglan are sunk. The German battlecruiser Goben strikes a mine and is beached. The German battlecruiser Goben would eventually be refitted by the Turkish Navy. She would be the last surviving member of the Imperial German Navy when she was decommissioned in 1950 and the longest serving dreadnought ship in any Navy. On January 26, 1918, Herbert Hoover, the Food Administrator, calls for wheatless and meatless days for the war effort. The 16th Engineers Railway was Michigan's only all-volunteer regiment. The unit 
organize, mobilize, and train in the city limits of Detroit. The 16th Engineer was one of nine reserve pioneer regiments called for by the National Defense Act of 1916, which included six construction units, two operating units, and one shop unit of railway engineers. The 16th Engineers were organized when the War Department ordered General Order No. 61, issued on April 14, 1917. On June 5, 1917, the 16th Engineers began mobilization, when several hundred of the men who had enlisted in the new regiment reported at the Michigan State Fairgrounds in the north end of Detroit on Woodward Avenue. Most of these men were prospective non-commissioned officers, and they had received their orders by mail or telegram to report for active duty on that day. When the regiment was mobilized, it had a strength of 1,089 enlisted men and 50 officers. The newly arrived soldier was fully outfitted in Army clothes if he was fortunate enough to have his carefully taken measurements agree with the scanty selection of sizes on hand. He was issued a campaign hat with a red and white hat cord, blouse without collar, pants, front lacing canvas leggings, shirt, and broad-toed garrison shoes. Most of the men arriving the first and second day were successful in their dealings with the supply sergeant, but many of the late arrivals were months before they'd get fully outfitted, several in the regiment going to France in civilian pants and shirts. Rifles did not arrive until June 26. When the regiment went into camp at the Michigan State Fairgrounds in Detroit, it was equipped with the remnants of supplies of the regular army, some of which were leftovers from the Spanish-American War. The 16th spent the months of June and July at the Michigan State Fairgrounds, training and getting organized. Finally, on July 23rd, they received a telegram from the Chief of the Engineers, directing them to go to Hoboken, New Jersey. Baggage and equipment were supposed to arrive on July 28th, and personnel would arrive the morning of July 31st. The 16th arrived in Hoboken, New Jersey on the morning of July 31st and began boarding the liner Tuscania. The Tuscania left New York on the evening of August 1st, 1917. The Tuscania was sailing towards Halifax, Nova Scotia to join a convoy, when on August 4th at 6 a.m., it ran aground on Egg Island Shoal off Halifax. The Tuscania was towed into Halifax Harbor, and for 10 days it was repaired. The men, in the meantime, had the monotony of ship life broken by four-hour hikes to nearby Dartmouth for needed exercise. The local population was highly enthusiastic in greeting the regiment, as it was their first glimpse of American troops on their way to France. At 5 p.m. on August 13th, the Tuscania weighed anchor and slowly moved out through the Narrows. She assumed convoy formation with five other ships headed for Europe. The convoy sailed uneventfully on a prearranged zigzag course in clear sunny weather, with the men enjoying the passage on the deck. The ship's routine was broken up periodically by exercises, lifeboat drills, and intervening time was taken up by music, card games, and boxing matches. The 16th Engineers arrived in Liverpool on the evening of August 23rd and proceeded the next day by train to Camp Borden, a camp used for Canadian troops who arrived overseas. On August 25th, the British Army held a field day celebration at Aldershot near Camp Borden. King George V and Queen Mary were present. One of the activities on the field day was a tug-of-war between U.S. and Canadian forces. The captain of the American team was Joe Egan, who was 6'4 and weighed 240 pounds. After the tug-of-war contest, King George went up and shook Joe's hand and told him he would be happy to have him on his team for the big tussle in France. After crossing the channel, the 16th engineers arrived at the French village of Till Chatel in the Dijon region of France on the evening of August 29th. Till Chatel was a small village of about 750 inhabitants located in a remote countryside region of France. It had slumbered with occasional interruptions for many centuries, 
but the three years of war have left many visible signs of deprivation undergone by its population. The soldiers were billeted in the houses of Tilchatel, which consisted of a house, a stable, and a barn, all in a courtyard. In the center of that courtyard was a large manure pile. When the soldiers of the 16th Engineers tried to remove the manure pile, it created the first diplomatic situation in France. The first construction project for the 16th Engineers was to work on Base Hospital 15, which provided for enlargement and modernization of the sanitary system suitable for hospital purposes. Another construction project that the 16th Engineers took on was the construction of Camp Williams near Charmont, which was the headquarters of the American Expeditionary Force. On September 26, 1917, the 16th Engineers packed their bags and left Till Chatel to move to Camp Williams at Ile Surtees. The 16th Engineers were now working on the line of supply for the American Expeditionary Force from the port cities of Saint Nazaire to Ile Surtees and then to the front lines. One of the notable projects would be the Nevers Cutoff which would involve a bridge and a viaduct across the Loire and paris Marcel rail lines. These would isolate the American traffic from the French movement of troops and trains and war supplies into Paris. Engine terminals would also be built at divisional points. The construction project for Ile sur Tees was very extensive, but no tools or equipment were available. So the engineers had to purchase or rent French-made picks, shovels, and wheelbarrows. Also, they bought Chedite, a low-powered explosive the French were using to, for blasting rocks. As you'll notice in the pictures, most of the work was done by hand. Lieutenant Colonel George Webb was the engineer for the project with general supervision, and Major Sam Robertson was in charge of construction, both from the 16th Regiment of Engineers. By December, the railroad project at Ile sur la was proceeding nicely, and warehouses began to be built to house supplies for the American Expeditionary Force, which would be arriving in 1918. Besides the rail project at Ile sur la the 16th Engineers also were developing Camp Williams into a permanent camp, and underway they constructed an electric light and water supply and a gasoline pump that pumped 50,000 gallons of water into a reservoir from the Talay River. On March 26, 1918, the 16th Engineers were transferred to the British region in Paddy de Calais because of the German advance. On June 18, the regiment was sent back to the American front to start working on the Nevers Cutoff, the largest construction project of the American Expeditionary Force in France. The Nevers Cutoff was planned double track standard gauge line, which would not only save about seven miles of haul through Nevers, but also would avoid the extremely congested rail traffic in that city, which was receiving and shipping large quantities of AEF stores, besides handling the great French thoroughfare traffic from the Mediterranean ports to Paris. The cutoff had long been planned by the American Service of Supply between the Atlantic ports and Ile sur la -Tees. The three separate regiments had been assigned to it. Progress of the work had not been satisfactory, but modern contracting equipment now had been concentrated at the project, and the 16th found themselves at last equipped and ready to work. The Nevers Cutoff was about five and a half miles long, but it crossed two canals and the main line of the paris lyon Mediterranean Railway and then needed to be bridged at the Loire River. The line necessitated very deep cuts and a number of fills, much of the cut being rock. The purpose of the Nevers Cutoff was to save hours of time in both the transport of troops and material to the American sector. It would eliminate both the de delays and extra mileage of passing through the Nevers Yards so that the American trains could move directly to Dijon from the assigned American ports between Brest and Bordeaux and avoid mainline congestion. This was the largest railway project in mainline war construction by the American Expeditionary Force and a vital link in the free movement along the American line of supply.
During 1918, the 16th Engineers were building and preparing the lines of supply between the French ports and the American sector. Meanwhile, the combat sections of the American forces have been giving a good account of themselves in beating the Germans at Cantigny on May 28, 1919, and by stopping in early June the German thrust nearing Paris while the French troops were retreating in panic. In the Champagne defense, July 15th, with Giraud's French army, which was one-third American, at Soissons on July 15th, and in the clearing out of the Marne salient in the last hot days of July. The San Miel Offensive, the first all-American battle, began on September 12th, was completed four days later. The people of the Allied countries, heartened by the American success, were now fast coming out of their despair and into the hope of final victory. Their tremendous preparations in the rear of the American front was soon to be justified. In the next few weeks, the Americans would be thrusted into the enemy lines, the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. The 16th Engineers would now be supporting the American Expeditionary Forces Offensive, known as the Meuse-Argonne. They would be attacking the German forces, which held the land for nearly four years in spite of repeated offensives by the French, who finally pronounced it impregnable. During their occupation, the Germans had strongly fortified the sector with tr a trench series, concentrated fortifications, pillboxes, barbed wire in various depths, with battery positions and machine guns emplacements covering all avenues of approach. It was crossed with four huge defensive systems of trenches, the Hindenburg, the Hagen, the Volker lines, and finally the Krimhilde Stalung. Any penetration of these defenses would be costly, as it would imperil the German railway supply line to France. If Pershing could break through to the railway lines with a series of lightning strokes, the Imperial armies of Germany would be trapped and enveloped by the Allies, and a debacle would follow of huge and important consequences for the Fatherland. On September 26, 600,000 American soldiers were assembled for the greatest battle in American history. The doughboys were in the lines, the artillery in position, prepared to fire, and the auxiliary troops ready. At 2.30 a.m., the mass artillery opened up, rendering the blackness of the night with flaming shells smothering the German trenches in a torrent of high explosives. The first day's advance by the infantry was so swift that the Germans hadn't had time to destroy their light railway lines. The railway engineers began to move in and take over operations. These units, working all hours under severe conditions, at times in a sea of mud with no substantial balance, were quickly repairing blown out sections of track and lining up the operations to rush supplies to the troops and shells to the guns. In the middle of October, the drive had eased down until shattered divisions could be replaced with fresh ones, artillery brought up, the lines reformed, and the lines of communications, highways, light railways put in order to supply the fighting troops and divisions with food and equipment and ammunition. This required more engineering troops behind the lines, and the 16th Engineers Railway was among those units brought up to support the advance. Finally, at 11 o'clock in the morning on November 11th, the roar of guns suddenly ceased. A strange quiet took possession of the hills and valleys, and the sanity again returned to the earth. The war was over. The job was done. The Yanks could now go home. February 27, 1919, the 16th Engineers passed in review of General Pershing, proudly displaying their black A on their left shoulder, which symbolized their part of the 1st American Army. On April 10, 1919, the 16th Engineers boarded the liner Panaman, which would take them back to the United States. After almost 20 months overseas, the 16th Engineers had a proud record of service, building the infrastructure for the American Expeditionary Force and supporting the 1st Army of the American Expeditionary Force during its offensive in the Meurs Argonne region of France. Late in the evening on May 5, 1919, the 16th returned to Detroit at the Michigan Central Station. On May 6, at Roosevelt Park, Honorary Colonel William Livingstone presented the 16th Engineers with new regimental colors. Then they marched through the streets of Detroit. 
Then he took a short train ride to Camp Custer in Battle Creek, Michigan, and were discharged. They received their little red stripe and a bonus pay of $60. The 16th engineers were no more.